Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, on Saudi Founding Day. His Majesty expressed wishes of abundant health and happiness to the custodian of the two holy mosques and further progress and prosperity to Saudi Arabia and its people. He paid tribute to the remarkable civilization and development achievements witnessed by Saudi Arabia over the decades. His Majesty praised the deep Bahraini Saudi relationship and the development they witnessed at all levels. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness to consolidate these historical relations and enhance cooperation to serve common interests. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 3 of 2022, amending some provisions of Law 11 of 1975 regarding passports. The law stipulates that Article 5 of Law 11 of 1975 regarding passports shall be replaced by the following text. It is not permissible to leave or return to the Kingdom of Bahrain except via, de via the designated exits, using the passport or any other document that replaces it, or the identity card issued by the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Minister of Interior shall issue a decision specifying the exits designated for entering and leaving the Kingdom of Bahrain. It also stipulates that any provision contradicting this law shall be repealed. His Majesty also ratified and issued Law 4 of 2022, amending some provisions of the Civil Aviation Law, promulgated by Law 14 of 2013. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, on the occasion of the Saudi Founding Day. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister expressed his best wishes to the custodian of the two holy mosques and further progress and prosperity for Saudi Arabia and its people. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of Bahraini Saudi relations and the importance of furthering cooperation to achieve joint goals. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qalaybiya Palace. The cabinet affirmed the importance of the U.S. trade zone in furthering economic progress, commercial investment and bilateral trade cooperation between Bahrain and the U.S. The cabinet welcomed the laying of the foundation stone for the American trade zone, which follows the announcement of the investment and strategic projects package, part of Bahrain's industrial sector strategy 2022-2026 and economic recovery plan. The cabinet expressed its sincere congratulations to Saudi Arabia on the occasion of the Kingdom first celebration of Founding Day, the cabinet highlighted the depth of culture and history within Saudi Arabia, as well as the progress it has made in its development across many sectors under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and the support of the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The cabinet congratulated the Emir government and citizens of Kuwait on their 61st National Day and 31st Liberation Day. The the cabinet commended the progress and prosperity witnessed by Kuwait under the leadership of its Emir, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, and the support of its Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah. Following a review of the latest developments in Ukraine, the cabinet expressed the hope, its hope that diplomacy would prevail and differences would be resolved by peaceful means without escalation. The cabinet also expressed hope that the international community's efforts would be focused on bringing about lasting and comprehensive peace. After reviewing a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior, the cabinet launched 24 initiatives to develop the services of the nationality passports and residence affairs. These initiatives are part of Bahrain's economic Economic recovery plan and will contribute to enhancing the competitive competitiveness of the kingdom and support development across economic investment and service sectors these initiatives include the expansion of instant and electronic visas the king fad causeway visa the introduction of the trusted traveler system and a training visa the introduction of a residence permit for foreign wives of Gulf nationals, the issuance of electronic passports, the cancellation of arrival cards, the delivery of passports inside and outside Bahrain, and the reduction in price of the multi-entry multi visa.
The cabinet discussed a number of memorandums during the meeting with the following outcomes. The approval of the following memorandums, a memorandum by the government executive committee on the Kingdom of Bahrain's afforestation plan, which aims to double the number of trees by the year 2035. Mangrove trees will be quadrupled in, li in line with the goals of the UN Climate Change Conference, COP26. The plan also includes a number of initiatives, such as increasing the number of trees in government projects, encouraging community partnership to increase green areas, providing policies that support afforestation, and encouraging individuals to participate in afforestation. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to three proposals and two law proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet reviewed the following topics. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Development and in Infrastructure Projects on a summary of the committee's work in 2021. The summary includes the most important topics discussed by the committee and its priorities in accelerating the implementation of projects. The Cabinet took note of, ministerial, of a ministerial report by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications regarding Bahrain's participation in the International Technological Conference, LEAP, which was held in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority, and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, inaugurated the third edition of the West Asian Paralympic Games 2022 Bahrain at the ceremony held in Arad Fort in the presence of a number of officials and heads of participating delegations. His Highness Sheikh Khalid announced the commencement of the Games in which 11 countries are participating with 700 athletes. His Highness expressed pleasure in inaugurating the third edition of the Games, expressing pride that Bahrain is the host, which affirms the Kingdom's status as a host of various sports, championships and events. His Highness stated that holding this edition is an addition to the successes made by the Kingdom in hosting the 2021 Asian Youth Paralympic Games, which affirms the Kingdom's readiness at the logistical and organizational levels, expressing hope that the edition achieves success and wishing all the participating teams success. The President of Bahrain Paralympic Committee and President of the Supreme Organizing Committee, Sheikh Mohammed bin Da'i Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he welcomed the attendees and participants, hailing the unlimited support of the leadership of the Sports March of the People with Disabilities. The Games banner was raised and the ceremony concluded with an artistic show of Bahrain's hosting of the Games.
The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, met with the president of the Egyptian Senate, Abdul Wahab Abdul Razak. Al Saleh affirmed the keenness on enhancing parliamentary cooperation between Bahrain and Egypt to support bilateral strategic ties. He noted that the bilateral meetings between heads and representatives of Arab parliaments that contribute to enhancing fraternal ties as well as cooperation and coordination. For his part, the president of the Egyptian Senate expressed pride in the course of the relations between Egypt and Bahrain and the continuous development that enhances cooperation in various fields. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, met with the Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil Al Asumi, on the sidelines of the fourth conference of the Arab Parliament. Al Saleh praised the great efforts of Al Asumi and the great success of the conference and its outcomes. He stressed the importance of such meetings in formulating unified visions and positions and shedding light on topics and issues that contribute to enhancing Arab parliamentary work. Al Saleh commended the advanced level of the conference and praised the efforts of Al Asumi for his continuous communication with the heads of Arab councils and parliaments, which contributed to the success of the conference's work. He indicated that the conference came at a time when Arab countries are suffering from political, economic, health and security challenges and stressed the need to continue the efforts in order to enhance the unity of Arab parliamentary action. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, participated in the coordination meeting of the Foreign Ministers of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries, which he was held in Brussels yesterday. Chaired by the Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the current session of the GCC Ministerial Council, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, and in the presence of the GCC Secretary General, Dr. Nayef Falah Al Hajraf, on the sidelines of the GCC EU 26th ministerial meeting. The ministers discussed the process of joint Gulf cooperation and means to enhance it in all fields, in addition to highlighting means to consolidate Gulf cooperation and coordination on regional and global challenges and files of common interest. It also shed light on the coordinating positions toward the topics on the agenda of the GCC EU ministerial meeting. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Al Zayani, also participated in the 26th GCC European Union Ministerial Meeting in the Belgian capital, Brussels. The meeting was chaired by His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud. The meeting reviewed the historic friendly relations between the GCC and the EU and addressed the means of enhancing cooperation between the two sides in various fields. They also underlined continuing coordination and cooperation regarding developments and challenges to security and stability in the region, as well as supporting the efforts aimed at enhancing security and peace at the regional and international levels. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism announced that the foundation stone was laid for the United States Trade Zone, USTZ, in the Salman Industrial City, in the presence of Minister Zaid Al Zayani. The U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Stephen Bondi, and members of the Bahrain Logistics Council and senior officials, the USTZ project follows the visit of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the USA in November 2019. A memorandum of understanding was signed in 2021, establishing the trade zone, which will contribute to boosting economic, commercial, and industrial cooperation and support bilateral trade exchanges. The American trade zone is part of the investment and strategic projects package announced in the industry sector, industry sector strategy 2022-2026, which comes within the economic recovery plan. Minister Al Zayani stated that the availability of economic opportunities in the region is the ideal opportunity for American companies to invest and expand their business through the American trade zone in Bahrain. He added that the inauguration of the hub reflects the ministry's commitment to achieve the visions of the wise leadership in implementing the goals and initiatives that have been set in order to fulfill the desired recovery of the economy. Yes, thank you very much for that question. I can tell you it's a great honor to be here today with His Excellency Mr. El Zayani to formally open up the U.S. trade zone. Uh, I believe that as this trade zone develops, it will serve as the center point for U.S. trade and investment into Bahrain and around the region. 
As you know, we already have a free trade agreement between Bahrain and the United States, and we really think that a new facility, as this U.S. trade zone represents, will be a springboard for pursuing opportunities in Bahrain and around the region and to build further the commercial ties between our two countries. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, participated in the Munich Security Conference in its 58th session held in Germany. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah participated in a session entitled Abraham Accords and Peace Options alongside the Minister of Defense of the State of Israel, Benny Gantz, and the diplomatic advisor to His Highness the President of the UAE, Dr. Anwar Mohammed Gargash. The Under Secretary stressed the importance of consolidating strategic cooperation between countries that believe in peace as a consistent approach to confront destructive ideas and and ideologies that maintain hatred and promote terrorism. He noted that the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has paved the way towards a more secure and prosperous Middle East. In this regard, he reviewed the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain in building a warm peace strategy that aims to reinforce the security and stability of the region. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah addressed a number of challenges facing the region, including terrorism, extremist ide ideology, and other security related topics. The Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received in the presence of the Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil al-Sumi, a delegation of heads of Arab councils and parliaments and heads of delegations participating in the fourth conference of the Arab Parliament. Al-Sisi stressed the importance of strengthening parliamentary communication between Arab countries during the current stage in light of its contributions to exchanging experiences and strengthening Arab unity and solidarity. The Egyptian president noted that holding this session embodies the national responsibility that falls on Arab parliamentarians at the crucial stage in the history of the Arab nation. Al-Azumi indicated that the Arab parliament conference's keenness to contribute to promoting joint Arab action and crystallizing a unified parliamentary vision to confront the current challenges facing the Arab nation. He appreciated Egypt's efforts under the leadership of the Egyptian president and its honorable stances in promoting joint Arab action. The directives of His Majesty the King to provide housing services to eligible applicants from the families of convicts and beneficiaries of the Alternative Sentences Program came as a confirmation of Bahrain's honorable record in the field of human rights. More in this report. History will record that the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is a humanitarian era full of development and civilization. An era that preserves the homeland, protects its children, supports its present and brightens its future through programs and steps that are pioneering and distinguished in form. Today, the Ministry of Housing has begun implementing the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa amid deep feelings of appreciation and gratitude expressed by the families of the beneficiaries. These humanitarian and societal initiatives towards the inmates of the reform and rehabilitation centers and the provision of all their human rights in a societal sense, including providing housing services to eligible applicants from the families of convicts and beneficiaries of the Alternative Sentences Program, is a matter of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister that they attribute to enhance the successes achieved by this pioneering program. The Kingdom of Bahrain always proves that its policies will remain bearing the distinctive civilized character that is going forward for the bright future of its people, thanks to the care and keenness of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. And of course, the distribution of housing services to the families and beneficiaries of alternative sentences is a reflection of the directives of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to provide the best services to all the people and promote human rights to preserve social cohesion and solidarity. To speak more about the impact of such step, we are joined on the phone by Shura Council Member and Chairman of the Human Rights Committee at the Council, Mr. Ahmed Al Haddad. Hello, Mr. Al Haddad. Can you tell us more about the significance? of providing housing services to the beneficiaries of alternative sentences and their families and how it impacts social cohesion. 
good evening, Yasmin. I would like to thank His Majesty the King for his valued directives to the concern authorities in the kingdom to provide and allocate houses units to the detainees and their families who benefited from the alternative punishments law. We as members of the Shura Council also value and appreciate very much the support of His Royal Line, the Crown Prince, and the Prime Minister for the initiative and the inspection of His Majesty, the King, in this regard. The humanitarian gesture, very well received and appreciated, and brought joy and happiness to the families and the detainees. We also believe the courageous steps taken by His Majesty, the King, in this connection will be on any doubt enhance and strengthen the development of human rights system in Bahrain. Such initiative and gesture for sure will strengthen the social fabric in the country and bring peace, harmony and security to the country. Up to date, 3,826 detainees have benefited from the application of the alternative punishments law, which was passed in 2017, as per the latest report of the Ministry of Interior. Bahrain, under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King, has witnessed and still is witnessing constant development in the field of human rights. We as members of the Shura Council, are certain with the grace of Almighty God, this trend will continue in the future of the goodness, for the future of the goodness of the people of Bahrain. And that was the Shura Council member and chairman of the Human Rights Committee at the Council, Mr. Ahmed Al Haddad. Thank you for joining us. The BDF, represented by the military parachute jump team, the military band, and a group of military cavalry participated in the military affairs in the pavilion of the General Secretariat of the GCC in the activities of Expo Debay 2020. A performance was delivered by the military parachute jump team and the Bahraini military band in El Fursan Park Square, where a number of musical pieces were played and the paratroopers delivered an artistic performance through their parachute shows. The military band of the Bahrain Defense Force also delivered a performance during the march inside the exhibition.